Hey, y'all. Hi. Welcome to the long-awaited How to Look Amazing When You Feel Awful, part one. Long-awaited by me. I've been wanting to film this for a long time, and the reason that I couldn't get it together was that it was too momentous of a task, because I have several ideas about how to look amazing when you feel awful, and I was trying to put them all into one video. Recently, though, I renewed my efforts, and I got the idea to split it into two. So in this video, I'm just going to be telling you one way that you can look amazing when you feel awful, and then I'll be going over the other way in a, a coming video, and then if I have more ideas after that, I'll just continue the series. It'll be like, how to look amazing when you feel awful, part 52. But today it's just part one. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm glad you're here. I'm Hannah. I love beautiful things, including beauty products and fashion. I do sometimes review beauty products, but I also really like talking about ways to use one's beauty products, things that don't necessarily involve buying them, just using them. And that's what this video is. If all of that sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. I feel like it would be using strong language for me today to say that I feel awful. I don't quite feel awful. I'm not at my best though. It's a little bit of a mixed bag going on. My hair did look unmanageably bad when I woke up this morning. And for some people, this might be considered unmanageably bad. But for me, it's a little bit of an improvement on the original situation. I had a meeting this morning, so I, I did like a quick little bit of extra diffusing on my hair to give it some shape, but it's still not what I usually like it to be. And I had a teeny bit of makeup on earlier for that meeting, but it has since pretty much worn away. I dyed my brows last night, which is giving me a leg up on the pile. When my brow dye is really faded, that's pretty much when I'm able to feel the most awful, especially in terms of just like how things are going on the face. I mean, emotionally, I sometimes feel awful irrespective of the condition of my brows. But the overall situation inside and out is helped today by the fact that they're freshly dyed. So I didn't wake up today thinking to myself, I feel awful today. It's definitely time to film that video. The video was just on the calendar. So I'm not necessarily going through the transformation today, but this is something that I found very useful, especially in my past life, like before my current work situation and before the pandemic, because this way of looking amazing when I feel awful was the most useful to me or is the most useful to me when I have to be somewhere. It will definitely also work for Zoom. I mean, this will be a banger for Zoom. If you have to like be on a video call and you wake up feeling awful, like this is it all the way. But I used this exact strategy more when I was in academia and I had to like teach a class on a day when I felt awful or show up to a class or to an event on a day when I felt awful. And to be clear, it's okay not to look amazing when you feel awful. In fact, I think that the strategy that I'm about to share with you doesn't necessarily get me like looking my best or my most amazing. That's not really the point. The point is that it's quick, it's easy, it's something that I was always able to bring myself to do when I felt awful. You know, it's like not too much effort because when you feel awful, you don't feel like sitting down and going through all the steps of your skincare routine and all of the, you know, layering makeup and delicate and taking time and getting into the zone and choosing your outfit and putting it together. Like you don't feel like doing any of that stuff. I frequently don't look amazing when I feel awful. I enjoy looking awful and feeling awful. When I can get away with that, that's usually what I do. But there are two things. One, sometimes you need to for some reason, like because you're in a professional setting or you have obligations, you need to kind of put yourself together a little bit. And this is a way to do that to great effect, even when you feel awful. And two, sometimes putting yourself together a little bit can help you a lot to feel less awful. So the first thing that I'm going to do, curiously, and this is never how I do things, the first thing I'm going to do is to change my sweater, sweatshirt. So I'm just wearing this casual sweatshirt. I'm doing this because the top is part, the top that I'm going to choose is part of my strategy. And I'm also going to do something with my hair. And I want to have the top that I'm going to be wearing on before I do my hair. So step number one, if you're following this technique, is to put on the closest thing you have to 
a black turtleneck. I have a couple of black turtlenecks and this one has a little bit of detailing. It's got a little ruffle on top of the neck part. It doesn't have to be fancy. In fact, I feel like the simpler, the better. So this is a little bit on like the fancy side for this strategy. In fact, I do have a simpler turtleneck that's just like a wool long sleeve with like a high neck that doesn't have any detailing. That's what I would prefer, but it's dirty right now. So I'm wearing the next best thing as far as this strategy is concerned, it'll do. And if you don't have a turtleneck or you don't wear turtlenecks, or if you don't wear black, just the next best thing, right? So if you don't wear black, but you have a navy blue turtleneck, that's what I would suggest. If you don't wear turtlenecks, but you have a fitted, kind of like a sleek black long sleeve top or a short sleeve top, that's what I would suggest. The idea is that it's black. So for me, or the closest thing that, that you wear to black, like maybe dark brown or dark green or something, if that's more your style, but it's polished, but without making me feel like I'm doing the most in any way, because doing the most is the last thing I feel like doing, or rather the most is the last thing I feel like doing when I'm feeling awful. Doing the least would have been leaving on the oversized sweater. So I'm doing something, but to me, the thing that puts me at the highest level of polish with the lowest amount of effort, both physical and emotional and spiritual, is a sleek black top, more specifically a sleek black turtleneck. Part of why I like a turtleneck, and I wish I had my other one because it comes up higher, is that it covers the neck. So when it comes to putting makeup on, for me, I'm often dealing with the difference in color between my face and my neck. The more of my neck that I can cover, the less of that that I have to worry about. So it kind of knocks something else cosmetic off of the list of the things that I don't feel like doing because I feel awful. So that was step number one. Are you with me? Good. Step number two, it's gonna be hair. My hair, again, isn't at its absolute worst today. There is, it has a little something something going on. On a normal day, I wouldn't mind leaving it like this, but when I'm feeling awful and my hair is really not behaving, or if I'm feeling awful because I've been like crying. I mean, sometimes I wake up feeling awful, feeling like I've been hit by a bus because I stayed up too late and I was like crying about something, or, I don't know, maybe I had one too many drinks. So it feels like the face is like dry or puffy. The eyes are puffy. And I, I, a lot of times feeling physically bad goes along with the feeling that the face is, is like a scrunched up raisin. So even when my hair looks fine, or even if you're not someone who worries very much about your hair, I am surprised to find, and you might be surprised to find, how much this can help. And what this is, is to slick back and sleek in the hair as much as possible. For me, there are two ways of doing this and I'll try to demonstrate both of them to you. So I'm not like brushing out all of my hair, just brush the top layer so that I could get a smooth, sleek surface. I'm gonna try to kind of do the same thing with the top layer of the underneath part of my hair. If I was really doing the most, I might get some texturizing spray, hairspray, dry shampoo, and spray any like hair product and spray it and then put the brush through again to try to slick back my bangs. But because I'm about to take this down and show you option number two, I'm not gonna do that. So this is just the ponytail version. I just wrapped the ponytail around itself and stuck it in with a pin to get it even more secure. And because I have those shaggy bangs, you can see that my hair is like puffing, the bangs are puffing up because they're not long enough to go into the ponytail. So I'm using bobby pins to secure them. Now, I have a lot of layers in my hair, so it's not the easiest thing for me to get this like slicked back hair. I'm also, again, I'm about to take it down, so I'm not trying super hard. But for some of you, you'll have hair that lends itself more to, to this. I don't necessarily feel like I look my best with my hair slicked back like this. If I, I don't think I look terrible, it's a look, but it doesn't ordinarily make me feel like I look amazing or like I look my best. If I did feel that way, then I wouldn't have gotten all of those shaggy layers, right? I would have let all of my hair grow out long so that it would be easy for me to do this and I would be doing it all the time. But the point isn't to make a whole bunch of choices that are all the choices that make me feel like I look amazing, that make me feel my best. The point is to apply a, a strategy that just has a couple of check boxes, right? You just check 
checking two or three things off the list so that it's easy, but it's a strategy that when you when you do all the things together, it really, really helps. It like adds up to more than the sum of its parts, basically. So it can be a slicked back ponytail. It can be a slicked back bun. It can be as slicked back as you can get it. You can, you know, try harder than I did and do better than I did. And if you don't have hair that's long enough to pull it back like this, think about what is slicked back or very sleek controlled hair for you. So if you have a bob, it might be just parting it down the middle and slicking it down with a little bit of water or maybe even some pins on the side. If you have short hair, it might be just a matter of putting like a little gel in it and really slicking it back and making it as sleek and polished as possible. Just getting it out of your face, getting it back and getting it sleek. So here's the other way that I sometimes do that and that people sometimes do that with hair like mine. Again, because of all of those bangs, this requires a lot of pins for me and isn't ordinarily what I would do, but it is a look, it is intentional, and it feels kind of good to just be smoothing all of that hair out of my poor little scrunched up raisin face on days when I'm feeling bad. I feel my best when my hair is like wild and flying around, framing my face like a lion, you know? But it's messy when it's like that and it sometimes takes some tinkering to get it to do the right thing. This choice is taking all of that muss and fuss off of the table and because it's really different from the way that people are used to seeing me, it again really presents polish without it having been too much effort. So now I'm going to deal with my face. The turtleneck was step one, sleek hair was step two. Step three is the face and we're going to continue to maximize impact while minimizing labor. With this strategy, the goal for the face is to do as little as possible, as little as you can do and still feel comfortable in your skin with the exception of one area in which we're going to do the most. But we'll start with my version of as little as possible and still feeling comfortable in my skin. Because I deal with some redness on my skin, so naturally without makeup, my skin is redder than the natural color of my face. And you can see, you know, compared to the skin on like my, my shoulders and neck and arms, it's redder. So I want to use a little bit of something to balance that out, but I don't want to do a lot. I don't want it to be super high coverage. I don't want to have to use very many different kinds of makeup because I'm feeling awful. So I'm going to do the fastest, easiest, and most foolproof thing that I have going these days, which is this balm foundation from Salt New York, Sneaky Balm. This is the lightest shade and it's a little bit dark for me. So I mix it with the white, the shade adjuster. And that does seem like it might be a little bit fussy, but it's actually not. I'm just sort of like dipping back and forth between the two and applying it to my face. I like this because it's just one step. So if I had a concealer, for example, and I was unscrewing the cap, I, this is gonna sound really mincing, but it, on days when I'm feeling awful, it's real. Unscrewing the cap, taking the wand out, putting it on the back of my hand, taking the brush, dipping it in, those are many more steps than just opening this palette, dipping the brush in, and putting it right onto my face. So I really gravitate towards this. I'm starting with just the sneaky balm and I'm putting it straight on, but I am, I'm not gonna put it on my cheeks. I'm kind of giving my cheeks a miss. I'm just putting it underneath my eyes and on the sides of my face and my chin where the, where uh, it, where my chin's quite red. This product is really skin-like and it shears out really beautifully and it doesn't look very much like makeup on the face. So I'm not even like holding a mirror close to my face. I'm looking at my mirror far away. I'm doing this in the hasty and disgruntled way that I would do it if I was feeling awful, but it had to be somewhere. So that's just the product. Now I'm going into the white shade adjuster and I'm just gonna brighten it up on my chin, under my eyes. Again, trying not to get onto my cheeks because that redness is helping me look healthy. Like the redness on my cheeks is helping me kind of look healthy and alive. If I covered up my entire face with product, then I would look kind of flat and washed out and made up if I didn't go back and apply blush, but I don't wanna deal with blush today. So I'm just leaving my cheeks as they are. And a little bit on my finger to conceal this blemish. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna leave that for complexion. Some people 
only sometimes wear complexion products. If you don't have redness and you don't have blemishes or you do, but you don't feel like it's really pressing to cover those things up, then I'd skip this step. If, or if, I had ha if I'd had one of those magical mornings, sometimes they wake up and my face isn't really looking all that red and my skin actually looks pretty balanced. That usually doesn't happen on mornings when I'm feeling awful for some reason or another, but if that had happened, I would have just skipped that step. But as it was, just a little bit of product, it just helped, right? My neck still looks a little bit brighter than my face, but on a day like this, especially if I had my other turtleneck covering it up, it's like the least of my concerns, right? So my brows, again, are kind of at their best right now, but I usually, no matter what's going on with them, I usually shape them a little bit with some brow gel. Again, I know not everyone does this, and if this isn't one of your standard almost never or never skip it things, then, you know, choose whatever those things are for you. My brows are definitely on the bold side right now. The important thing to me is that they're somewhat groomed, so they're not just in that like flat fallen position. That's enough for me on a day like this. For me, just for putting myself together so that I don't feel like I'm showing a raw red face and, and brows that have fallen like a sad souffle, to the world, that's enough. For me, the bare minimum is just a little bit of complexion and brow gel. It used to be that mascara was also part of the bare minimum for me. I don't feel that way anymore. I'm fine with my bare eyes. Because my cheeks are a bit red today, I'm fine without putting anything else on my cheeks. Those two things are all that I need. So now for the piece de resistance, the third heavy hitter after turtleneck, sleek hair, the third one is a strong red lip. I have chosen to go with kind of a, a, a light red. I have a bunch of red lipsticks, and when I was trying to choose one for this video, I was thinking, well, if I were really feeling awful and I really had to be somewhere and I was using this strategy, which one of these reds would I pick? I would pick one that's kind of like a light red rather than a vampy red because I'm very pale and I want to follow through with the entire three-part strategy but I don't wanna feel uncomfortable. I don't wanna feel like I'm doing the most, right? So when it comes to the selection of bold red lipsticks that I have, a red that's on the lighter side is for me the safest feeling option. This is Givenchy Mandarin Bolero. So I almost always blur the edge of my lipstick when I'm applying a bold color with my finger. I run my finger along the vermilion border, which is the, the term for that part of your lip that's not really your lip, but not really your skin either. I run my finger along the vermilion border and blur it, soften the line. I almost always do that because I have slightly uneven lips, so it's always more trouble than it's worth to try to get like a perfect sharp lip line. Almost everyone has uneven lips. I just find this to be the easiest way to wear a strong lip naturally, but on a day like the day in question, a day when you feel awful, you know, you don't wanna be over here with like a lip liner trying to draw on a perfect line, and if there's not much else going on in the face makeup wise, then a really sharp, clean lip that looks like it took you five minutes, it might sit a little funny, whereas a blurred patch of bright red on your lips is going to suit. So that's the finished look. This is it. It's a three-part strategy. Black turtleneck, sleek hair, whatever that means for you, and a bold red lip. And let me tell you something. My lips are kind of dry right now. I didn't apply chapstick because I was coming straight. I didn't prepare myself. I was trying to simulate, even though I wasn't feeling that awful. I was trying to simulate the kind of day, the day in question, right? So I just sat down. I didn't moisturize my lips. I didn't really do any skincare prep except for whatever was left over from like way earlier in the day when I had first done a little bit of something, but it had pretty much all worn off. My skin's a little bit on the dry side. My lips are very dry. I didn't apply any kind of like gloss or lip plumper or anything. So the lipstick it, close up at close range, it looks a little crusty. My lips are a little, it's not sitting perfectly even. My lips are a little bit peely, but that's okay because I'm not trying to look perfect. I'm not holding myself with this strategy to the standards to which I usually hold myself when it comes to putting together an outfit, doing my hair, and applying my makeup, my, my skin, my lipstick. All of what I usually am trying to do is out the window. I'm just checking the boxes. Turtleneck, sleek hair, bold lip, anything else that I need to feel you know, my my minimal best, and then out the door. I'm not trying to look perfect. I'm not trying to feel perfect. 
I'm just trying to look amazing for someone who feels awful. <laughs> like, look amazing even though I feel awful. And really what that means is like amazing for someone who feels awful. And the thing is, most people, most other people don't notice that kind of thing. So, you know, if I showed up looking like this to some sort of event instead of the way that I looked when I came on camera, people would be like, you look great. Especially if I was like, I feel awful. People would be like, well, you look amazing for someone who feels awful. That's the point. That's what we're going for. And it's kind of a trick of the eye because when everything is sleek and simple like this, you look at, you just see the lips and the turtleneck. You know what I mean? You just see the silhouette and the color, the pop. And it creates the impression of someone very put together and poised. I even feel like since I sleeked back my hair, slicked back my hair, I started like sitting up straighter and I just feel a little bit more energy in my spine because of having put this look on. And I would be happy to show up on any Zoom call or at any event like this. It's calmed down the part of me that's like, ah, I'm not put together, what should I wear? Because when I'm feeling awful, I can't really answer that question, I can't really deal. I ordinarily love putting myself together for an event or a class or a Zoom call. I like making making those decisions ordinarily. And there are all sorts of choices that I would make that are different from these choices if I felt good. Or I guess another way of saying that is that when I feel good, these aren't usually the choices that I make. Some of them maybe, but not necessarily all together like this. It's not my signature look. It's not my favorite look. But when I need it, it works like a charm it has never failed me. And it doesn't take very long. I mean, I've been filming for a while because I've been talking through, but if I just had five minutes to get out the door, put on the turtleneck, sleek back my hair, threw on the lipstick, and then maybe dealt with like a tiny bit of complexion stuff if I had time, that's it. Like that would be it. It, it takes no time at all. It takes very little focus and the payoff is huge. So that's why I wanted to share it with you. That's why this idea, this video idea has been percolating for such a long time. It seems simple and I know that I'm not the first person to think of a black turtleneck and a red lip and sleek hair as being something that makes you feel and look put together. It's just a little trick that I've had in my back pocket for years, and that's the kind of thing that I want to be dredging up out of my memory bank and bringing to you. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. I'm particularly curious to know how it goes. For those of you who have never worn your things this way, you know, if you have a black turtleneck but you never wear it, or you tend not to slick your hair back and now you try it because of this, especially if you happen to feel awful today and you watch this and then you immediately go and try it. I just, I'm dying to know how it goes for you. So if you have any stories like that to, to report, please let me know in the comments section down below. Thank you for being here and don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 